we don't have to guess, guys. We just absolutely don't. Remember, none of us are that smart to predict tomorrow's winner. Okay, this is this is not about uh, trying to, to sound smart or being smart. I'm as dumb as they come. I'm a doorknob. I'm an end table. Okay, I need price action to not only tell me what's going on, but I need it to scream at me and you know, really, really aggressively to tell me what's the next move. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap up show. I uh, hope everybody had a good day today. So uh, last night there was no video. I was uh, fighting some sort of bug, 24-hour um, bug, kind of knocked me out yesterday. Woke up today uh, much better, almost you know, pretty much 100%. So take care of yourself. When you feel your body kind of giving you signs that something is wrong or you're overwhelmed or just physically or mentally exhausting, well, it's probably are. You know, take some sort of precautions. Uh, luckily, just turn into some sort of 24-hour bug. And here I am. So let's talk about the market. There is a, a good news, bad news um, situation brewing that's probably going to uh, affect your trading tomorrow. Okay. So if you've been watching this broadcast for a long, long time, um, I was very, very sell biased for the more, you know, probably about three weeks area and market short term. I don't want to use the word bottoming out, but the bulls did a very, very good job, started reclaiming levels. And we knew that the ultimate um, line in the sand for the bulls to kind of seize control was going to be the 50-day moving average. And the, the bulls did a phenomenal job, absolutely phenomenal job, uh, reclaimed level after level after level. Uh, this morning, they woke up above uh, the 50-day moving average uh, over that 320 level. And the next area of concentration, if you guys, again, have been watching this broadcast for a while, you knew that this level up here has been rejected several times, right? So 120, uh, 324, 324, 324, 324. And if you look at the high here today, it was 324. So we have kind of like a good news, bad news situation that, yeah, I think it's gonna definitely affect your trading tomorrow. Um, the good news is we finally closed above that 320 level. So bulls did an, an excellent job. Uh, not only did they rally off the bottom, but they this is the first close uh, over the 50-day moving average in quite a while. So that's a good thing. The bad news is we got rejected off the 324 level. And now, remember those channels we, we talked about a couple of weeks ago, how important that 3 level was to defend on the way down and how important that 324 level on the way up. And you remember how everything was very, very choppy. Uh, the channel started consolidating and getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Now think about that. That was a range from 324 to 311. Now we have a range from 320, right, to 324. So you're talking about now, instead of a $12, $13 range from here to here, now we got a $4 range to, to, to really, really uh, try to navigate from. So I, I asked this question on Twitter and I said, based on this close, would you think this is a bullish, you know, bullish or bearish close? And the, the one thing that's it still amazes me, and this is not a bad or good thing, uh, just to show you how many, you know, how many different thoughts there are out there. Uh, so I asked this question on social media, and I've always maintained that nothing is subjective. It's like looking at a piece of art. You look at a piece of art and you say, I really love it. The next person comes along, they go, I hate it. They should burn this thing uh, before anybody else is subjected to it. And, you know, technical analysis without a very, very major or a very definitive line in the sand is very, very subjective. And some people turn around and say, well, Dan, this is obviously a very bullish close. We finally reclaimed the 50-day moving average. They're absolutely right. Somebody could turn around and say, Dan, this is a very, very bearish close because again, we got rejected for the fifth time in a row at the same area. And you know what? They're right as well. So we're kind of in a scenario that you ask 100 different people, you get you know 100 different responses, but the most important part continues to be where these technical areas are and for us to really dissect what the market's telling us. You know, gun to my head, right? And if you look at charts going into tonight, you'll see a lot of really bad charts, right? Considering we just went from, on the queues from 297 
the 324, you're gonna find a lot of bad looking charts. You're also gonna find a lot of charts tonight that had big runs and got rejected at supply, okay? So this is really brewing for tomorrow's session like, in layman's terms, a pretty aggressive chop fest. Um, I, I do believe there's some pretty good value shorts for tomorrow, okay? Um, but I also believe that if you really dig deep enough, you can find some pretty decent longs as well. And the one thing that I will tell you, if you are completely biased in one direction for tomorrow, you're gonna find yourself pretty beat up, okay? I, I, I give you my word, because again, when you're trapped in a $13 range, it's a very, very tight window to make money. When you're trapped in a three to $4 range, right? Think about it, from 324 to 320 and change, you got a what, three, $4 window? It's gonna be very, very tight. And here is the absolute worst part of all, right? Here's some stocks that really never participated, right? You could see here, you know, Tesla had a big, big run over the last three, four days. You could turn around and say, well, this is this bullish or bearish. Again, I can make an argument both ways, but you could clearly see here, Tesla lost the previous day's channel, and now it's looking to kind of roll over. Uh, you look at a stock like Alibaba, right? There's pretty much, you know, nothing to argue about. The stock looks like crap and never participated. Uh, as the market was taking out all time highs, the stock is just bleeding and bleeding. So at least you can identify uh, where the weakness is. You look at a stock like Beyond that had a really, really uh, big, aggressive um, start of the year, completely rolled over, got rejected off the 50-day moving average, and just keep this in mind as I as I kind of dictate, you know, not a dictate, excuse me, I don't want to use that word, kind of re reiterate my point. You see how, you see how, um, you see how Beyond yesterday got rejected at the 50-day moving average and kind of rolled over, right? Now, here's my point. Look at, look at the members of the queues, right? You, you see where Netflix got rejected today? At the 50-day moving average, right? Look what happened the next day after Beyond got rejected on the 50-day moving average, right? Rejected, rolled over. So look at Netflix, right? Look at Netflix, rejected. Look at NVIDIA, right? Rejected, right? You get my point? So there's, there's a lot of names. If you go through a lot of charts today, you'll see a lot of similarities. Now, again, it doesn't mean that we're gonna roll over tomorrow and go back to the lows. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is because we have such a tight channel, can these stocks wake up and reclaim the 50-day moving average? Absolutely. Can the Qs wake up tomorrow and reclaim today's highs? Absolutely. But again, this is one of those scenarios we don't have to guess, guys. We just absolutely don't. Remember, none of us are that smart to predict tomorrow's winner, okay? This is, this is not about... Uh, trying to, to sound smart or being smart. I'm as dumb as they come. I'm a doorknob. I'm an end table. Okay. I need price action to not only tell me what's going on, but I need it to scream at me and you know, really, really aggressively to tell me what's the next move. And although, you know, you could turn and make a really, really good valid point one way or another, just remember your bias is a very, very destructive way to kind of get your account to start bleeding. If you believe one way or another and the price action starts building the completely the opposite way, you're gonna find yourself in a world of trouble. And the last thing we wanna do is paint ourselves in the corner, bull, bear, and tomorrow will be indifferent um, and kind of let the next day or so play out. Eventually, two things are either gonna happen. The bulls are either going to reclaim on the close this 324 area where it's got rejected now one, two, three, four, five times today, or, right, or they're going to close below the five day moving average and start making this way back down to this level here. It's going to have one is going to happen. It's, it's not going to stay here. That, that I give you my word. But until we get a green light, whether it's on the long, long bias or short bias, I think it's incredibly important tomorrow. Tear down, that's number one. Tear down until we get a very, very clean sign. And for those who are making that really aggressive case, well, this is a quadruple, you know, the quadruple top, blah, 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 we're gonna go lower. Just keep this in mind. We never took out the previous day's low. You can't make that statement, we're going to do this until the, the stock or the market or ETF takes out either the previous day's high to the upside or takes out the previous day to the low side. So the idea that you can say definitively, we're going lower tomorrow, or we're going higher tomorrow, you're guessing. You're guessing and you're just trying to prove a point that your voice matters and my voice doesn't matter, your voice doesn't matter. It's all about what the price action is going to tell us. So if you are trading tomorrow, of course, I trade every single day. I'm active every day. Some days I'm less active, some days I'm more active. But when you're looking at a close like this, right, which is literally you take a coin, 
you flip it and, and you can make an argument in both cases, tomorrow be responsible, trade less, take less tier size, right? And unless something really stands out that's so visually easy to, to really wrap your head around, don't do yourself any favors by trying to squeeze water out of a rock. It's just, again, this is the rock. We're in a very tight rock, right? 324, 320. Something's going to give here, whether it gives tomorrow, the next day, or the day after. Just be a responsible adult. Wait it out. Let the trades come to you. Again, you, your job is not to search for trades. You'll be surprised how you'll just sit there and something will fall into your lap. And when it finally does and it confirms macro-wise, that's when you start putting on capital. And that's when you start putting on exposure on a very, very uh, aggressive and, and, and confirmed basis. So be very, very wary uh, about tomorrow's session. So uh, let's talk about today. Um, again, you're not gonna have many things that have really, really exploded or imploded. First of all, we were looking at the upside. What's amazing was at two o'clock, just because we got to that top of the channel on the queues at 324, around lunchtime or so, I was 2,000% long bias, right? 2,000. We reclaimed the 50-day moving average. We're attacking the top of the range of 324. Unless the market really made a statement and sold off, tomorrow was a no-brainer. Tomorrow was, was playing aces. We're getting dealt aces. Tomorrow was in tremendous premium hand. And da 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 da, -da Game over, right? So that's the point. Never forecast. Never anticipate. Let the price confirmation let it confirm to you that it's going to be okay that your your thought process is in the right direction and until it really does play out it's only a setup in your brain right it's only a setup in your mind it's only a game plan that you're putting together and it's just an opinion that you're formulating until that actually happens you have to let it play out and that's exactly unfortunately we were super bullish around noon Right, four o'clock, not so much. So we're kind of flip coin going into tomorrow. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots. Uh, obviously, I was watching for an upside move on Tesla 17, 19, 17, 20. Never came close, right? Never came uh, even close. I actually like a pivot tomorrow to the downside. Uh, snow, which is again, which is uh, so amazing. And I kept on saying, it, there's so much call buying in this thing. They were coming for the April 380, 250 call, like nonstop, the 300s, the 305s, and this thing just completely sold off. Again, very, very weird. Uh, Square, I really liked it, needed to build 252. You know, it got the 252 pre-market and just really died on the vine. And I'm saying to myself, how can we be rallying? How could the Qs be up three, four points and nothing's rallying? And that was the whole point. Beyond, I'm waiting for that 151 needs to build, never came close. So we have we have four stocks so far that we're watching in the morning. Nothing is building. Matter of fact, not only are they building, they're selling off as the market's rallying. Again, there was a lot of semiconductor strength today, but it was just so, so odd. Uh, RLX was a pretty, you know, pretty good trade. Nothing huge, but uh, RLX 20 needs to build. Here was RLX. Uh, here was RLX. Here was the pivot at RLX. And it actually looked pretty good for a while until the complete, um, you know, complete reversal. So I got long at 20. Uh, I was making sales in the 1940s, almost 50s, and then it just st got stopped out on the rest. Um, you know, it went to, you know, it, it ran up like, you know, like only 65 cents or so. But again, it got killed with the rest of the market. Again, always take money along the way, guys. Uh, you, you just never know. Uh, I was watching this setup here that never, you know, never came close. Facebook was huge today. Congratulations for all you guys who did catch Facebook. Uh, 278 uh, needs to build. Here was Facebook, right? Here was Facebook. It took out the 278. That was the top of supply of last week and went all the way to two, uh, 282. So big move there on Facebook. Uh, DNN never came, came close. Uh, RBLX absolutely exploded. A recent IPO, uh, 74, 74, 50 uh, needs to build on RBLX. Here is RBLX, right? Took out the 74, 74, 50 and took out its IPO high of 78. Yeah, still looks higher for tomorrow. You know, Keep an eye on this thing. It's still... Uh, looks higher for tomorrow's session. Uh, big move there. Take on the way up. Uh, NVIDIA, you know, 539, 540 needs to build. Only went up like a couple of bucks and then came back in very aggressively as soon as the queues got rejected. Uh, again, this is, how, this is how great technical analysis is. Look, the 50-day supply of Netflix is 533.60. Any close above it is super bullish, right? This is at 12 o'clock. Look at the high, right? Look at the high of the day on Netflix right? Look at the high of the day in Netflix. It stopped within 18 cents 
of the 50 day moving average and got rejected. This is why technical analysis, guys, it's, it's, it's your lifeline. You don't need to ask, you know, 350,000 people their opinions on the trade, where a stock is going, where a stock can stop. It's all right in front of you. If you embrace technical analysis, I'm telling you, you're gonna be shocked of your results. So again, big rejection here at the 50 day moving average on Netflix. Um, so that's that there. Lizzie, if you caught this thing, God bless, I, I did not. Um, it opened below Citron, you know, I don't wanna use the word pump, uh, Citron socially talked about it, right? I'm being very political correct here, right? 11.50 needs to build, it got halted, it opened to under 12, and then the stock just absolutely went bonkers, like 14, 15 bucks, uh, and that was it. So I, I think, again, going into tomorrow's session, guys, uh, leave your bias at the door, uh, leave your aggression at the door. Uh, we are really, you know, that, that expression stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, that's us for tomorrow. So we have to be very prudent, very, very decisive in our decision making. But most important thing, as I, I tell this, especially to a lot of aspiring traders, you don't need to trade every day, right? Especially if you guys are trading the option side. If you're, if you're buying, if you're buying premium, you're dead tomorrow, right? You're absolutely dead. Unless something really comes out of a range you're absolutely dead if you, if you if you buy premium. If you sell premium tomorrow, you better know what you're doing as well. But the most important part is let these channels play out. Maybe they play out tomorrow. Maybe they play out the next day. But the most important part is they will play out and being patient will really pay off. Guys, God bless. Have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow.